All right, guys, happy Monday, good afternoon. It is the first, second Monday of the month. We are flying through the year. It's wild to think that we're already into June, um, that our little summit celebration is coming up next month, and it's just, gosh, flying by. I wanted to I'm gonna dive into some challenge group stuff here soon, but if you guys didn't see it today, that weekend are launched. So it was announced on the Super Saturday back in April, and then there was a delay, I'm guessing because like shipping stuff. Um, but today the weekend are launched. I pulled it up on my computer right before we started. It's basically like a sampler. So it comes in this cute little bag, but you get energized lemon, fruit punch, the the two packets of the way shake or way you recover a packet of hydrate and then the three different beach bars so it's a great way um, for people just to try different things to be honest sometimes I'll put those little samplers together myself for my clients it's 25 bucks um, I would imagine because it's not an HD item the shipping on it probably is going to be like whatever, like $5.95, so shipping's gonna be higher. There was a question in one of like the um, coach groups that I'm in and they were asking if it's going to be an add-on. So you know how when we order a challenge pack, right? Like they'll give you free shipping or 10% off and free shipping or 25% off and free shipping or whatever it is. There was a question if they could make this one of those promotional offers. I looked this morning, I didn't see an answer on it, but I feel like that would be awesome because $25 is cool, but paying six bucks to ship it less than ideal. So I haven't seen it. If I get it, I'll definitely put, or if I see an answer to that, I'll definitely um, post and let you guys know, but it is out there. It is a great way for people to try the different products. I often do get people who ask me, can I get samples? And you know, we have samplers um, of Shakeology and we have the performance sampler but this is a good way to give you a little bit of all of that so check that out share it with i know i put it in my newsletter that i sent out to my team on sunday as well as my clients just for something else for them to try but our call today is going to be all about challenge groups and running effective challenge groups so this isn't about recruiting this isn't about how do you get them to join you this is okay now they've invested with you these people have already made the choice they want to be a part of your group how do you make it successful? How do you make it that they become raving fans and they never want to leave? And ideally, they become a coach just like you because they can't help but share it. So I always like to start by letting my people know my goal is never for you to buy something from me. Like, cool, thank you, much appreciated, but that's not what I'm here for. My goal is to help you get from that decision that you want to make a change to actually getting the results. My job does not stop when somebody buys a challenge pack and two SC points pop up in my back office. That's the byproduct of what happens. And yes, that is something that I feel like we focus on and the numbers are cool, but getting the results is everything. Being able at the end of 30 days or 60 days to go into your challenge group and see people proudly sharing side-by-side -side results, proudly letting people know what it is that they have achieved lets you know that you've now done your job. Little backstory, I got started with a challenge group. I had no desire to ever build a, to build a business. It wasn't about the income, it wasn't about the community, it wasn't about you know all these things that coaching had to offer. What happened was I fell in love with my challenge group because my coach poured her heart into it. So when I joined that first challenge group, I wasn't the person who, you know, I am now, I wasn't the person who was gonna put, participate every single day. I was a fly on the wall. But even though I didn't participate, my coach was still showing up every day, posting meal plans, encouraging flex Fridays and, you know, like selfies, which I rolled my eyes out and thought were crazy. But she did all these things that made it fun. And in time, as I got more comfortable with her and the other girls in the group, I began participating. And the more I participated, the results I got. Once I got the results, I had to keep going. So I signed up as a discount coach. Once I became a discount coach and I knew there was a business opportunity, I began sharing it. And it kind of grew from there. I firmly believe that your challenge groups are the bread and butter of the business. Yes, you can come in here straight from the business without any results and soar in Excel, but being able to get results yourself and give people that same experience so that they can get results too, sets such a solid foundation for your business. So I always, like I said, I let people know from the get go, I don't want you here because you bought something. Like that's, that's just the initial part to get in. Now the hard work begins and the hard work is actually falling through with the commitment that you made. 
So the first thing I do is I set a clear onboarding system. So do you guys have like a system what you do when somebody signs up? Like someone signs up and you're just like, shit, now what do I do with them, right? Okay, so I'm, I've been there, right? So what I wanna go through is how I onboard people. And I wanna let you know that how you do it can be totally different. But having a system so that when they do join, you know exactly what to do will help everything run a little bit more smoothly. Repetition's key because just like our coaches don't hear something once and do it, um, our challengers are going to be the same way. They're going to need you to repeatedly say the same thing over and over until it sticks in their mind. So I start with a wellness guide. And I feel like I recently talked about this on a call and shared it, but I'll, I'll share when I share the recording for this, I'll pull this document out as well, but it's just a PDF basically of like prep week. Um, so I take the basics of, you know, this is how you navigate beach body on demand. This is how you take before pictures. These are your program options. We've got portion fix. We've got, um, to be mindset. And I take all the basics and I have it in a document. So they're going to see that as soon as they enroll, I get them, I send them an email and they have this wellness guide, but I know that they can't just read a wellness guide and be ready to hit the ground running. So I send a series of emails. Basically, I take prep week. Do you guys all know what prep week is? Do you, do you run one? Does your coach run one? I'm seeing some yes, some no's. So the prep week is, I all, and I've done this different ways. So I've done this in a ongoing challenge group and I've done this in a brand new challenge group. And I'll kind of share with you guys the way I do it differently. So prep week is, okay, again, someone signs up. You can't expect them to just know exactly how to do everything that you're gonna do. So what I do through prep week is I talk about meal planning. You know, I ask them, are you going to follow ultimate portion fix or to be mindset? Some of them answer and some of them say, what is that? So that helps me know, oh crap, these people don't even know what nutrition plan they're following. These ones are ready to go. I ask them things about, you know, I enforce, not enforce, I highly recommend um, taking before pictures. I let them know that they don't have to send them to me, but I want them to just tell me that they've taken them. It usually just takes one person to boldly drop their before pictures in the comment thread before everyone else says, oh hell, why not? That's what I'm here for. I'm going to change it and I'm going to do it. But I talk about before pictures during that prep week. I talk about, you know, the foods that you should eat or shouldn't eat, you know, what are good things? What are bad things? Some people think clean eating, you know, for example, when I started, I ate oatmeal packets, but I thought oatmeal was better than cereal. So I was like, well, that's clean, right? Oatmeal is good. Well, the oatmeal that I ate was prepackaged oatmeal with brown sugar and cinnamon. So the better option would be to take oatmeal, cook it, add a drizzle of honey and add in some fresh berries. So teaching them those little tweaks. Because I find if you overwhelm them with all these things all at once, it's like too much to process and they're checked out. They can't handle it. So that prep week is sort of an introduction. I also know that people have access to Beachbody On Demand almost immediately. So while I may not be diving into the fitness side right now, I still encourage them. If you're ready to go, start getting curious. Start browsing around. If you want to start your workout program, that's fine. But I really find the first thing to focus on especially with brand new people is the nutrition aspect of things. Does that all make sense? Don't want to lose you guys. Um, when it comes to the prep week, um, I do have it set as like when I first did a group at the beginning of the year, I went through prep week and then I made it a unit in my Facebook group. So Facebook has an option that you can set it to be, um, I think it's called a learning, it's like visual or something under learning say that wrong, but it allows you to add units into your Facebook group. So it's a setting within your group that gives you, uh, you can actually make units. So I just have a unit for prep week. So for example, I had a lead yesterday that joined, um, she actually responded to my lead email, which was super exciting. And she was like, okay, I'm ready to jump in. So I added her into the Facebook group. I sent her that wellness guide that I mentioned. And then I told her to check out the, the, prep, the prep week section under the unit. And then all of a sudden I saw her introducing herself and, you know, where she's from, what her goals are and that kind of stuff. So it gives them an opportunity that when somebody comes in, when I'm not necessarily recruiting for a challenge group, that if they're ready to go, they can be added in at any time. On the flip side, um, when I run a group, maybe for a brand new program. So, you know, when I started a bar blend group, when I start the next, um, what, the MBF group, um, this month in June, I actually started on June 1st, a strip challenge, which was totally different than just a basic challenge group. It was 
it was a specific group. Um, and I did an actual prep week day by day. So that group doesn't have the unit. So new groups, I run the first week of the month where, or the first week of the group where I'm actually going through those basics of taking your pictures, understanding a meal plan. How do you make your shape? You know, like if you don't like it, good, that's normal. I hated it too. So let me give you some tips. And I walk through those basics, whether it's in an, a unit section that someone jumps in and sees, or it's the first week in a new challenge group. I don't, you know, don't rush that part. The other thing I've started doing probably in about the last two to three months is I offer my new clients a one-on-one -on -one call. Just like I would offer a new coach who signed up, do you wanna hop on the phone? Like, I'm gonna give you information, but do you wanna actually get on the phone and talk about this? What I find is a lot of those customers, they are overwhelmed, because this is brand new to them. And it was brand new to me too. I was overwhelmed in the beginning as well. Some people get overwhelmed and they totally quit. Some people get overwhelmed and they'll figure it out, but there's no way to know what these brand new people are gonna be like unless you talk to them. It doesn't take long to go over, do you know how to access Beachbody On Demand? Here are your options. Have you thought about which workout program you wanna start with? You know, and you can talk to them about what they like, what they don't like, This is, and then give them a recommendation. I'm gonna recommend you do blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I talk about their Shakeology or other supplements that they're using. It's a super quick call, but especially for people who you may not be familiar with, um, like if you're meeting them through social media and you know they're not your lifelong best friend and they're not your sister or your cousin and you don't know them as well, I find act, having that little one-on-one -on -one call has really been beneficial for our relationship as well as to set the stage for their expectations. So I get them enrolled, I send them a wellness guide. I have my prep week, whether I'm sending it to them, you know, they're in an ongoing group that they're like, okay, here's the Facebook group, go through this unit section, or I'm actually going day by day if it's a brand new group, you know, through that first week. And then I set up a call to talk through th talk things through with them. Yes, it's a process. But again, your work doesn't stop when they hand you, you know, your, your email to say that I just purchased a challenge pack. This is the beginning of what actually goes through to help them get results. Um, I just want to check comments. I saw a bunch of things going through here. Um, the wellness guide, social learning. Thank you, Rachel. That's what it's called. I knew it was learning something. Social learning is the Facebook name, like the group, just the group type. Group type is social learning that allows you to add the units. Um, doo -doo -doo. Bod groups. I actually, so with the bod groups, I took my wellness guide and I added it as a file. So with the bod groups, I couldn't, they don't have the option to do the units. So I did add it as a file. And then when people joined my bod groups, they're going to get that wellness guide and prep week via email versus being able to go grab it in the Facebook group and units. Um, doo -doo -doo. On the one-on-ones, having a hard time getting ladies to commit to a call. So if you can't get them to commit, then maybe they're not quite ready to commit. And again, I, you know what? I don't know that I would have hopped on a phone call with my coach when I first got started. Like, I mean, I've gotten on the phone with girls who I've literally met through social media and never had a conversation with before. It's awkward. Like, it's super awkward. We've never spoke before. So it's, I don't know. I feel like sometimes you just got to get uncomfortable. Um, and if they're not going to, if they, if you can't figure out a time that's going to work to get on the phone with them, send them a couple of voice messages. Like, okay, you know, like, or, you know, take those questions. Like I said, I talk about, do they know what meal plan they're going to follow? Do they know what workout program they're going to be doing? Do they know how to access Beach Body on demand? And kind of just set the stage for the expectations. And I really focus on, don't try to overhaul your life right now. So if someone's never worked out before and lives off of drive through and handfuls of peanut M&Ms, like I did before I got started, um, this is super overwhelming. So you might have to gauge where they're at, but I always start with picking one replace your breakfast, add in a workout. Let's, let's, let's work on your lunch next. Once we get breakfast, we get lunch, maybe then we can work on dinner. So it's definitely specialized to the people that you're talking to. But if they're not gonna get on the phone with you, um, maybe get them started and maybe offer up a call in another week. You know, Once they've gotten more familiar with the group and they're a little bit more comfortable with you and how things are going, you can send a check-in on how things are going and ask them, would they like to hop on the phone and talk through anything that they're going through? I'm really just finding that being able to give a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention to people is really helping retain them and helping them get better results as well. All right, cool. Okay, so got the onboarding down. So the second thing, if you're not having fun, neither are your challengers. 
So maybe this is more important if you've been in this for a while. I've been running at least one challenge group a, year, a month for over six years. Many months it's been two. I've literally ran over 100 groups. It can get monotonous. monotonous. It can get boring. And if you are bored and you're not excited to go in there and see your challenger's results, I promise you that they are just as miserable. And maybe that's a little harsh, but I had to change things myself because I found that I was going through the same motions, but I wasn't enjoying it the same way. So a few things that you can do is theme things out. So whether, you know, like I get it, not everyone's super creative. That's why we have Google. That's why we have Etsy. If it's not your jam, it's somebody else's. Embrace the fact that somebody else loves to create themed things and will create a guide for you. Yes, you might have to buy it for 20 bucks on Etsy, but getting some content from someone else, if creating content isn't your jam, go out there and use it. Team up with somebody else and maybe run a new group together. I've done so many different things to spice things up. Um, one thing that I did at the end of last year to change things up was I did one of the Fitbacks. So we've talked about them before. There's been team calls on them that go into more details, but long story short, a Fitback group is like diet bets that you see on TV or you see through social media where people actually put money in. And if they achieve it, they get a split of the pot, kind of like our Dream Team Olympics that's happening right now. You pay a spot to get in, and if you reach certain goals, you get a split of that at the end. So that's kind of how the, the health bets work, diet bets. You're your own boss. You can set the rules however you want. But that was another way that I was able to switch things up. A group I started June 1st was the Strip Challenge. I did this back in 2016. I found the real cheesy images I used to promote for this group, but it was based on, based on Tosca Reno's book, um, The Eat Clean Strip Diet. So kind of think about like, ultimate portion fix, but you're only looking at like the top half of each list. It's a more narrowed in food plan, but it is designed to lose weight. Now, I don't always say it's all about losing weight. I do a lot of things that are about the other benefits of why I work out and why exercise is so important to me. This was actually, do you want to lose 10 pounds? Like this was very much geared towards losing weight. So it wasn't a group I marketed to everybody. I didn't keep it in my ongoing group. I made a new one. I don't have a guide for you because I've literally been throwing it out as I've been going. I started it last Monday, but I knew that I had to stop doing the same thing I was doing on repeat because I was bored. I'm loving that group. The group's been fun. People have lost three pounds, two pounds, five pounds in the first week. And I'm excited and they're excited. And I know that that's going to compound to help them get greater results. So if you're not having fun, they're not either. What can you do differently? I have also had times where I'll branch off and team up with a coach, run a group for a month. You're not committed to marrying them and running every group for the rest of your life with them. Just allows you to do something different, market something different. There are tons of different like resources through Pinterest or Etsy that you can use to spice things up. If creating your own content isn't your thing, going live in your group allows you to take what would be a simple, boring post and really throw your personality into it. But um, oh, I wrote something else down here. Oh, just make sure that if you are using a, like a script or a guide, you add your own personality into it. So if you've been running a group and all of a sudden you, you were like, okay, I'm going to take her advice. I'm going to go find this guide on Etsy. I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to use this. If you don't tailor it to you, your people aren't going to, who, who joined you for who you are. When they see you post in that group, they're going to be like, I don't know who this is, but this isn't what I signed up for. Like, this isn't the vibe I got. This girl is so, like, it's, they're going to sense it. So I do buy things and use things. Don't get me wrong. But I also will put my own personal spin on it so that people can still sense my personality and make sure it still aligns with what I told them they were going to get whenever they joined this group in the first place. And then if they're having fun, they're more likely to share like share it with other people as well. So you giving them this awesome experience is a great way to create referrals. It's a great way to create future coaches. Um, giving them like it, I, I put probably the most work into creating challenge groups because I know that getting them having making having them have fun for one, but getting them resolved is what sets the foundation for a future coach in the in the future. Um, the third thing, so onboarding. If you're not having fun, they aren't either. The third thing is. What you talk about, people are gonna follow. So forever, and whatever workout program I'm doing, people will follow me and do that workout program. So like I do, you know, being in this for six years, I have a lot of people who just jump or, you know, follow me program to program, group to group. And what I do, they usually follow suit. I, when I drank um, the chocolate Shakeology, every challenger of mine enrolled with chocolate. 
And when I switched to vegan vanilla, when that came out, every challenge room was with vegan vanilla. And now that I drink vegan cafe latte, they all drink vegan cafe latte because that's what I started with. Like, obviously it varies, but for the most part, they follow what I do. So if I add digestive health and collagen to my shake every day, guess what they want to do? They're going to add digestive health and collagen to my shake. If I have a beach bar every afternoon at two o'clock because it helps me with my chocolate cravings and it fills me up way more than any other snack bar and it's perfect for on the go, guess what? They're going to grab beach bars too. So it's a great way to like, these people already, you don't have to sell to them because they already bought. They're in, they're in, they want results. So now you have the opportunity to really showcase all the other products that we have. Energize is life. And I've yet to have somebody who tried it and didn't actually love it. They're in there with you. So something I started doing, like, I don't know, there's a bunch of us that do like energized dance parties in the morning. If you don't do one, they're fun. And they're, they're just a great way to just, I don't know, have fun with energized in the morning. But what I started doing was I take that little music video and I'll share it in my challenge group. Like, this is how I get started in the morning is with my energized dance party. And you know what? They want to try it too. And when I started doing half lemon energized with half mixed berry and I added hydrate, so I'm using three products to make that morning energized. Guess what? They added it too. So your people are going to do what you're doing because they already trust, trust you and they're in with you. So if you're thinking, like I know for a while I used to think, well, they probably watch my stories because like they joined me through Instagram. So certainly they see that I drink three mixtures of a thing before I have my energize or my energize in the morning and that every afternoon I drink or I eat a beach bar. They're not watching your stories because if they're not a coach or somebody who does social media the way we do, chances are they're not watching every day. So don't assume they see what you're doing. Share what you're doing. Like, you know, if you're sharing it on your social media, take that same content and share it in your challenge group because what, what you're doing, they're going to want to do. And to be honest, that beach bar helps me avoid the cookies. That beach bar helps me stay on track whenever I'm out all day on a Sunday and I need a snack. So it's helping me get results. It's helping me build my business and it's going to help my challengers the same way. So sharing that I'm having this beach bar right now because I really want to eat the soft pretzel helps them realize how I use the other products. So keep in mind that they're going to follow what you're doing and then they're going to get like, I, I firmly believe that my results are driven by all the products that I use. Um, and that helps them see exactly what you're doing. Um, the next thing you want to be the ideal challenger. You're not here as an expert. You know, if you are a personal trainer or a nutritionist, congratulations, and you have an, an extra level of certification beyond what I have. But I know that my challengers love when I fail. If I tell them that I dove into the Dairy Queen blizzard on Friday night and it was delicious, they're going to be like, oh my God, thank you so much because so did I. Or, oh my gosh, I needed to see that you, you failed too because actually yesterday I had a really bad day and I didn't want to say anything because I felt like, you know, I would be frowned upon or whatever. You being the ideal challenger as yourself, as well as what you do in the group, sets the tone for what everybody else is going to do. So if you're not checking in every day, chances are they're going to drop off on their check-ins. If you're not drinking your shake and sharing it every day, chances are they're probably not either. So if you want your people to participate in your group, which hopefully you do, if you want them to actually share their day, share their struggles, share what they need help with, you have to set the tone and do the same as well. So I do make a point every single night to check in. I don't know, does everybody do a check-in in, in their groups? Like rate your water, rate your workout, rate your nutrition, one through five. Like that goes in my group every single day. But I, I comment, like, I'll go through and comment on all their posts, but I actually do it myself too because they want to see how my day is. And I'll be quick to pat myself on the back and say, I packed up this. And this is the other thing that I did. Then I'm also quick to say, but I caved here. And they want to see that you can still get results, that perfection isn't needed as long as you are still progressing forward and showing up. So that to me is probably the biggest thing is set, set the pace with you and how you want your coaches to participate in your group. They're going to follow you as well. The other thing is go live. Um, that is one thing that I actually dislike about the bod groups is the ability to go live and it makes it so much harder because I can tell you that this is how I make my shake every day, but to, I mean, it's an action I'm doing every single day to turn the camera around and hit live and talk to them for the couple minutes while I'm making that shake. 
really goes, you know, speaks. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it really helps. Um, so go live. I do my shake is one thing that I do regularly. If you're meal prepping something or meal planning, go live and talk about why you are planning out the way you are planning things. So they understand the process. And if you think it's monotonous, remember they have to hear it more than one time. So the meal planning, the meal prepping, making my shake. Um, and then another one that I find that I just, I see it a lot in my groups is how to drink more water. That is probably something I see in every single group that I run is people struggle with drinking enough water. So I have a YouTube that I will often pull that I had done like a live in a group at one point and I'll, I'll use that, but also going in and showing them this is, you know, the water, the, what are they called? Stir, those stir water enhancers. I love those and I use them every single day. I also have a bottle of lemon juice, like just like, it's like a dollar for a bottle of lemon juice. I use it for margaritas to make them clean and I use them in my water. So showing them what you're using it for um, is another great thing to just go live and talk about. But they being able to see you, like not just the scheduled out posts, like I love to schedule things and I feel like, whoo, I'm done. Like all my posts are scheduled in my group and it's, it's all set for the week. But popping in and going live really does add a lot of value. Um, and a question that I get a lot is, but how do you keep the groups engaged? I'm not sure if there's anybody here who's ever had a group that didn't go radio silent. Like that is normal. I, if you have always had jam and rock and challenge groups, like tell me your secrets. Um, because I can tell you, I have had more times than not my groups, they die. Not all of the groups are great. So it takes a lot of effort to think, well, if again, it's like kind of the whole, if they're not having fun then, or if you're not having fun, neither are they. If it's not engaged, then do something different. Create engaging questions. And this is, again, something I was refreshing as I started this group last Monday, was how can I set the tone to keep this, gauge, this group engaged, not just on June 1st, but the all the way through June 30th. I've been asking a lot of engaging questions. So I'm not just educating them. Like, yes, they need the education. A lot of these people are brand new. So they do need to understand what clean eating is. They need to understand what's the best time of day to eat X or Y, or why should you eat this over that? Like education is valuable, but also asking a lot of questions. So I've been asking them, not just like, here's your check-in, but you know, did you, what was what I like, did you survive or thrive? It's like encouraging them not to just drop five, four, three, and two and rate their day, but share more about it. Cause that creates more conversation. Nothing makes me happier than when I see other challengers commenting on other people's posts. I feel like that is when my job is complete, when they're not just commenting or checking in, but they're actually engaging on one another. So, you know, on Sunday at the end of week one, you know, I asked them, okay, we're at the end of week one. I need, I had, there was a series of questions and it, it was, you know, like what was one thing you, you know, one thing that you rocked, one thing you could do better, um, you know, something else you want to improve upon in the next week, or what was your favorite workout? Um, you know, and on my check-ins for the month of June, I don't just have, what did you make for a shake? How did you make your shake? Like I'm trying to get them to share more information than the, just a five, you know, their numbers on their day, but creating more engaging questions. There's, um, you can do water challenges. You could do, like, you know, see, see a chug, do a chug. I've seen that one a lot. Um, or maybe the post is at the beginning, you put a post up in the morning. It's like every time you fill your water bottle, comment below. You know, things that just make them, it could simple, that's not gonna talk, like necessarily be work for them, but something that's gonna allow them to actually have fun with it, that's also gonna move them closer to their goals. So if your groups are going radio silent, I would kind of take a step back and be like, well, how can I, like, how can I create more engaging questions and look at what you're sharing? Are you telling them things to do? Are you asking for feedback? Um, do a poll and say, I'm going to go live on Wednesday. What would you guys like to hear from me? What are you struggling with most? I've been getting the most feedback on meal planning. So I've been trying to share more simple recipes. It's something that I got away from. Um, I started using, it's, um, VA Mompreneur, I don't know how many people are familiar with that website, but she actually creates content for you and makes beautiful meal plans with gorgeous recipes. Like it's so pretty, something I could never and would never take the time to actually do myself. But what I found was people weren't actually using them. So I went back to my, my word on my computer and the table that I used back in like 2014 when I started 
And I was like, this is what I'm having for breakfast. This is what I'm having for lunch. And this is dinner. Do you know how many dinner recipes I have in a week? Usually two. How many lunch recipes? The two leftovers from the two dinners that I'm cooking. I eat super simple. I have a shake every day. I have eggs every day. I have a beach bar every day and a cooked dinner. Like I don't get fancy. So some people, I'll give you that beautiful meal plan and then I'm gonna actually show you what I'm eating. Because what I'm eating is super simple, super basic and a lot of repetition. Most people aren't creating a different dinner every day of the week. And if you are, props to you. I don't, I hate to cook. I cook because it's part of living. So I like super simple. The most common thing I heard from my challengers last week in my strip challenge group, they liked the recipes. They liked that it was actually simple and easy to follow. And I told them, if you don't like broccoli, don't eat broccoli. Sub out whatever the heck you want. If you don't have this, sub this. So I kind of I gave it to them as a guide, not like this is what you have to do. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to recommend to you. And they all, that was where I got the most positive feedback. They're like, that was so simple. Like I didn't have meatloaf, but I just made turkey burgers and I didn't have, you know, this. So I just subbed in that and it made it really simple. So I, this goes back to if like, you know, kind of taking, if you're going to purchase something, which I've been doing and it's great, then they're pretty, but also what's going to work for your people. I'm not actually using that meal plan every week. I'm using a real basic one. So that was something I personally had to shift on that I did. And now I'm seeing that they actually really like that better than this fancy complicated one. So I like to give options. I like to give ideas, but I also like to let them know this is actually how I'm eating. I eat super simple and I know not everyone's going to eat the same thing every day for breakfast and lunch and not everyone does leftovers. We survive and thrive on leftovers and repetition in this house. So figuring out what works for you and giving people options allows them to adjust it and make it fit to them. And I really stress that make it fit you. I want you to have fun with this. So if you're miserable in the morning because you hate oatmeal, but Megan's meal plan had oatmeal on it, so you have to eat it, be aware that you can sub that out for something else. Um, I know I saw a bunch of comments, so I'm going to pause real quick and just see if there's anything. Weekly check-ins. You know what? So on the check-ins for BOD groups, so on Facebook, I post a daily check-in because I found that people on my Facebook group were checking every day in bod groups because of all the logging that daily check-in post was getting lost so what i did in my bod groups is i made a weekly check-in post so my bod groups just has you know like whatever june 8th through the 14th and it's pinned at the top and i had one last week for june 1st through the 7th so for for the daily check-ins and bod groups i found it better to do it weekly um but then i have it set for daily in my actual facebook group um what do you use to schedule your posts um i actually just schedule it in facebook so like when you go to post in facebook there's an option to hit schedule and i just schedule them out so like last night i sat down and i scheduled out the daily check-in post for the whole week um because i'm not like following anything for the strip challenge i've really just been flying by the seat of my pants today i talked about like okay you're one week in congratulations if you rock the first week, like keep it up. What you did, keep doing it. But if you failed in the first week, don't give up. How can you switch it? How can you make it better? How can you make the next three weeks better than the week before? So I don't have, um, I didn't schedule out like daily posts for the week, but I did schedule out my check-in posts. So they're not consistent. They're definitely all over the place for time because it's kind of as I think of it or what I, what I'm, I'm going off of them. I'm reading their daily, like their night, nightly check-in posts and I'm seeing what they're doing really well or where they're struggling. And then the next day's post is literally something that I can pull from what they've shared that they're struggling with. Um, do you recommend running a new group monthly or program specific? So I started in January. I've done this now for the last three years and it's called Stronger Together. So it's a real super generic post. It was 2018 Stronger Together, 2019 Stronger Together, and now it's 2020 Stronger Together. But then I change it out each month. So right now it's the Summer Strong Squad. Last month it was May something. Um, so I change it June, like for the month. So June 1st through June 30th, it's all themed to this, but it's one ongoing group. So anytime somebody joins, they just get added in, like if they join tomorrow, they would get added into that group and the prep weeks in the files and then they'll get their email from me and I kind of set them off. 
when I have something different, like I did that strip challenge last, like to start in June, next month will be the new MBF. So I'll start a new group for that. Um, I had a specific bar group. So when it merits a certain group, I will create a new one. Obviously, the more groups you have, the more overwhelming it can be. So I don't like to have too many groups going at once because when I sit down at night, I'm sitting there checking in for an hour and it can be extremely draining. Um, and I have a lot of people who will do multiple groups. So I have, you know, the go-getter who's in my bod group and she's in my ongoing group, but she wanted to do the strip challenge too. So I actually say, I love that you want to be in all of these, but can you pick one to check into? Because when you check in three times, my OCD brain says I have to comment and love on you three times. And it's the same thing. So I actually ask them to please, if they're going to do something like the strip challenge, to, if you can stay in the group, just turn your notifications off and please do not check into that group because I will feel obligated to comment back on your check-in and it just creates more work for me. And nobody, I mean, they're all like, totally get it. Like, appreciate everything you do. I'm going to do the strip challenge this month. I'll go back to that one next month. And I'll do the same when the new MBF comes out. Like, love that because most of, again, they're going to follow me, right? So I'm going to do MBF. So then they're going to come and do that too. So when I have all these people in my ongoing group who are now doing MBF with me, I'm going to let them know, love that you're joining me. Let's just pick one to check into for this month because we don't need to do the same. Um, some don't listen, but for the most part, they really do. And it has been more helpful. Um, and then as for a program specific, I only run program specific with a program launch. Um, I have tried to do other program specific ones before, and I feel like they have bombed, um, or I don't, I'm not able to recruit enough for that one thing. A lot of people will join me after I've done it. So like I start bar in January, I have the most bar people jumping in in February because they had to watch me for a while too. So I don't usually do a, a program specific group unless it is um, for a program launch. Um, do you start, oh, that was the same question. Sunday night Zoom. I like that cat doing, and I've done that before too. I've done, um, Kat said she does a Sunday night Zoom for people. Like I've done that. So kind of like think about the same way, like how do your coaches, like when you onboard a new coach, how are they getting results? Um, what is it going to be for your challengers too? And I've done that before. I haven't done that for a while, but doing like whether you have a planned thing we're going to talk about, like week one, we're going to talk about setting up for success. And the week two, we're going to talk about, you know, how to maximize your meal prep, whatever you're going to do. But giving people a place to ask questions um, is really good. And also another thing, like we've been doing those um, Sunday or Saturday morning, like we started with the big sweaty Saturday that Beachbody put together back in March. You could always, like another way, I don't like to share my workout time because I personally like that workout time to be mine. Like I don't like to say at nine o'clock I have to log in because I have people waiting on me. Like I get it, that's accountability, but it also – on a personal level, that's my me time. That's my morning time. So I don't love to do that. But if you're someone who's like, oh my gosh, like these are gold and I love having other people to sweat with, even though we're doing different workouts, then whether you do it on Saturdays or whether you do it every day of the week, like I know there's a lot of coaches that they just drop a link at, link at 6 a.m. every day of the week and whoever from their boot camp wants to log in and work out with them, they do. If that's your jam, that's another way to really keep people accountable and keep them engaged um, and creating that community within there as well. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to share is you don't have to lead alone. So obviously you're here, you have an upline or an upline, 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 somewhere along the line. You don't have to do this on your own. Your people, I promise you, will respond better to you than they will to me. If you sign up as a coach and you just throw your people into my group and because you don't know what to do, they will actually respond better to you than to me because they don't know who I am. And it doesn't matter to them what I'm saying because they don't have any reason to trust me. So I think it's important that when you're getting your feet wet, you do join in with somebody. So if you're a brand new coach and you're running your group with your upline, do it. But don't leave your people just thrown in the group. Make sure you are still commenting on their stuff. And also, I also recommend creating like a Facebook thread or, you know, whether you're texting them or something so that you personally stay accountable to them. Similarly, maybe you've been doing this for a while and you've been running them with your upline, but now you've got this group of girls and you feel like you can branch out and do this on your own. When you branch out and do it on your own, you also don't have to take it on by yourself. You can, um, you absolutely can, but maybe you team up with someone who's in your new coach training. Maybe you just team up with someone in your coach page. Again, you're not married to them forever, but being able to have someone else to run a group with 
allows you to share that responsibility. Like I said, last night I sat down and I scheduled out all the nightly check-in posts for the week. If you're running a group with somebody else, you get to share that responsibility. I just, the worst thing you can do is throw those people into someone else's group and then expect them to get results from them. Um, yes, your coach probably helped you get results and that's awesome. But when someone joins with you, they're going to follow you and, and they want to see you leading in some way. So if you're doing it with someone else or doing it with your upline, make sure you still stay connected to your people because that's why they joined in the first place was because it was you that attracted to them for whatever reason that was. So that'll help. And then the other question I get a lot is all about converting your, your challengers to coaches. And guys, if they have a really great challenge group, becoming a coach is the next thing. It's not about how, like the wording, like how do you get them to convert from this to this? They just fall in love with it. So yes, you can invite everybody in your challenge group to a sneak peek call and you can personally message them. But the best way to get your challengers to be converted is that they naturally just want to share this with people. And it's, oh my gosh, my, my friend wants to join. Like, can she join under you? Well, sure she can, but she can also join under you. And here's how. So don't get hung up on like the best way to convert challengers to coaches. Realize that if you're having fun and they're having fun and they're getting results and you're getting results and it all kind of ripples in and compounds together, coaching honestly will become the next best thing that or the next natural thing for them to do. Do you guys have any other questions on challenge groups at all? I'll give you guys that little wellness guide so that you guys can see what I am sharing with that when I drop the recording of this. Um, I think a lot of it is honestly repetition. And what I'm finding with this group that I started last month when I needed to change things up for myself so that I stayed engaged was that the meal planning was the biggest struggle. And we know that, like we know nutrition is what drives results. Like that's no secret, we all know that. So pick a workout, have fun with your workout, but really understand what are they eating and what do they need help with? And you don't have to have all the answers. Beachbody blog rocks with recipes, like you can go there. Um, your meal plans don't have to be gorgeous and pretty. They can be literally drawn out. This is what I'm eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and just take a picture and share that with them. Do you start at the beginning of the month? Candace, that's actually something I changed recently. So for the longest time, I started them mid-month. I would start them, um, you know, like actually I would start like the third week. So like I would start prep week on the 15th. So I would spend the first half of the month recruiting into my challenge group. I would run a prep week and then I would run, you know, the month long challenge group. And what I found by starting it like on the first of the month, to me, it just helps keep like a monthly theme going. And I recruit at the end of the month. So for example, last month, I started advertising for the strip challenge a week out. So whatever the date was, a week, like that Monday before the first, I started advertising for it. And I was able to really boost my success club numbers through the last week of the month because I opened up early enrollment into this new group. But then I was still able to use prep week. So the first week of June, I closed enrollment on Friday. So through the first week of June, I was able to still get people in and still recruit into that challenge group because I'm just doing prep week at first. So what I did with the, you know, like the girl who joined yesterday is she got the email, she got the wellness guide. And then if somebody, like I said, if somebody joins throughout the month, because people will, I'll just add them into my ongoing one. But like that strip challenge group is closed. So I kind of, I started the first, I recruit the end of the month started it on the first and I still kind of, I left the first five days where I could still enroll somebody into it. And I'll repeat the same for July as well. Like I'll start a new group July 1st and I'll start advertising for it the last week of June to get people in for July. <clears throat> How do you deal with the delay of receiving shake? Oh my gosh, so glad you asked. Actually, this was something I didn't write it down, but I put my envelopes here. How do I deal with the delay? I send them love mail. So I've done this Gosh, I just threw them. I've done this for the longest time. I have always sent personal written notes to people whenever they join. Um, so I'm waiting on my Energize that I ordered three weeks ago um, because I ordered packets. So what I'm going to do as soon as my packets arrive is I will give them a lemon and a mixed berry Energize. Um, and I wrote them all thank you notes. Um, 
the one thing that is really great is that they're not waiting on DVDs to arrive. So you, again, this is where the first week of the group, I'm all about nutrition, which kind of helps with the fact that we don't have the actual Shakeology yet because you actually have at least three, four other meals that you're eating a day. So I've been really trying to get them to focus on their overall meal planning. Um, it, I mean, I, I personally am going on three weeks waiting for a Recover Energize to get here. So it is frustrating. I just tell them, I'm just so glad that it, you know, we were able to keep up with everything through May. It's just the backlog of everything, darn COVID. I mean, what else can you say? Darn COVID. I let them know that Amazon took nine days to deliver my son's birthday present. Like I had to tell my son, sorry, um, COVID delayed. I mean, I could have ordered it earlier, but I didn't. COVID delayed your birthday present. So it'll be here. And you know, if a seven-year-old can be like, COVID, that happens, like everything's delayed because of COVID. I hope that your adult challengers can understand that it's nothing that we can do, um, that the company's doing everything they can possibly do to get things here as fast as they can. Um, we are also growing rapidly, um, which is a really good pro problem to have. So there's delays. It sucks. I'm sorry, but we can focus on a lot of other things right now too. So I just kind of brushed it off. Um, but yeah, the delays aren't fun. And then send them a thank you. Like I've always done the thank you, but now I'm like writing in there, like it is going to be a couple weeks until, until your package arrives. So, you know, here's your, here's some energize to try out. Thank you for being patient. Um, you can also do like, I actually had someone send this to me, something I bought from somebody and she sent me an e-gift. She was like, thanks so much for your support. Um, she sent me a $10 Starbucks gift card. So again, like a little gesture goes a long way. I mean, a, a Starbucks coffee's I don't, like five bucks, right? Like a, like that five bucks would at least cover it. So if you wanted to, you could, you have their email because they signed up with you. You could send them a little, you know, e-gift like Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. Um, and you could even say, if you want to keep it clean, the ice cream tea unsweetened is my go-to pick. That's what I do. Um, so send them an e-gift and it's just that little act, letting them know that you care. And if you don't have packets and you just want to send them a thank you note, like send them the thank you note. Like it, those little things really do matter. So I've been just sending love mail. I actually do it all the time. I am on a first name basis with the post office and all of the workers and they know my children and their favorite snacks because I'm there that much. Any other questions? Did I miss anything through here? Do, do, do. All right. Well, I will upload this to YouTube. And when I share the recording with all the leaders, I will attach the Canva link for um, the little wellness guide. Um, and if you guys have questions as you're going through, if you're listening to this on playback, by all means, let me know. All right. Have a wonderful Monday. Bye, everyone.